It has been three years since the privately owned Chinese automotive giant Geely acquired the majority stake in Lotus, and it seems that the cash influx is having a very positive impact on the British brand. 2020 welcomes multiple all-new models to the lineup, while the old-timers are expected to receive significant upgrades. In today's episode of Automotive Territory Daily News, we will briefly discuss the most important Lotus cars of the upcoming model here, listing their detailed pricing and specs. So subscribe to our channel and ring the bell if you haven't already, and let's start the engines. Lotus Evora GT The newest iteration of the Evora model has been built specifically for the North American market, and it comes to replace the previously available 400. Unlike many of its major competitors, who tend to pack more and more high-tech features into their sports cars, the Evora GT is all about fully engaging the driver and delivering precise handling. The model is built on a lightweight banded aluminum chassis with the standard Bilstein dampers or optional Erlens race suspension package. Many body parts are made from carbon fiber, so the base weight of the GT is 3,175 pounds. You can also opt for the titanium exhaust and carbon fiber bumper, roof, diffuser and tailgate to further decrease the weight by another 71 pounds. The model is propelled by a 422 horsepower 3.5 liter V6 with manual or automatic transmission options. Lotus Avaya This is the first ever electric car by Lotus and at the same time the first all-new model developed by the brand after the change of ownership. The name Avaya was inspired by the biblical Hebrew language where it means alive. The newcomer is aiming for the title of the world's lightest EV hypercar, integrating the ultra-lightweight carbon fiber monocoque and magnesium wheels into the construction, though due to the heavy battery it still measures 3,696 pounds on the scales. The powertrain was sourced from Williams Advanced Engineering and is comprised of a 70 kWh battery pack and four electric motors independently powering each wheel. The resulting output equals to 2,000 horsepower and 1,254 pound-feet of torque, enabling the 250 miles top speed in under 3 seconds 0 to 60 sprints. Only 130 device will be released, but even this limited run will make it the world's most powerful production automobile in history. Lotus and Hope Technology Bicycle Nearly 30 years ago, Lotus Engineering participated in the development of a unique individual pursuit bike, Type 108, which was based on the Mike Barrow's carbon fiber monocoque design. This time, they collaborated with Hope Technology to build the ultimate track bike that is expected to help athletes from Great Britain's cycling team win medals at the next summer's Olympic Games in Tokyo. The automotive designers created a unique front fork design and handlebars while Hope Tech used their 30 years of expertise in the field to design a frame consisting of high-modulus composites with fabric woven in the UK. The bike has already debuted at the Minsk Arena in Belarus and passed the inspection by the Union Cyclist International, so we could expect record-breaking performance in the nearest future. Lotus Evora GT4 Though still often referred to as a race car brand, Lotus has not been taking part in Formula 1 racing since 1984. Now, the brand is planning to make a comeback to the international motorsports, and their first step in this direction is the new GT4 concept. Based on the regular Evora, the car receives a number of truck-specific changes, including a new roll cage, lightweight aluminum wheels, plus carbon fiber air intakes, bumper and rear spoiler. Inside, the model features a single race seat, a built-in fire extinguisher and a new digital instrumentation. The race spec Devora keeps its 3.5-liter supercharged V6 that is now tuned to produce 450 horses. The company has already started testing and driver training, and it plans to compete in the GT4 category in the nearest future. This video is a part of the annual digest about new car lineups from the world's automotive manufacturing. If you want to learn more about the newcomers, make sure to follow the links in the description and info cards. Like this video and let's keep going!
Lotus Elise Cup 250. Though this model can hardly be called a newcomer to the market, making a debut for 2017, we still decided it deserves an honorary mention this year, since it managed to snatch the title of the Icon of the Icons from the legendary Ford Mustang Jeep Wrangler and Porsche 911 at the 2019 Autocar Awards. The Cup 250 comes powered by a tandem of a 1.8-liter supercharged four-cylinder and a Toyota made six-speed manual, making 246 horses and 184 pound-feet of torque. Though this output is rather modest for a sports car, thanks to being 31 pounds lighter than its predecessors, the Roadster can speed to 60 in 3.9 seconds and reaches 154 miles per hour top speed. The car also offers great handling and cornering on track, generating 325 pounds of downforce at the maximum speed. Lotus Exige Sport 410 Until the arrival of the all-new generation of the Exige, the latest entry to the lineup, Sport 410, will remain the freshest model in the range. When it was introduced in 2019, it landed between the Sport 350 and Cup 430, blending the everyday road-going convenience of the former with the top-class performance of the latter. The coupe is motivated by the 3.5-liter supercharged V6 that channels 416 horsepower through a 6-speed manual gearbox. The previously track-oriented components were retuned for the road use, so the Exige Sport 410 benefits from the oil cooler, larger clutch, AP Racing J-hook brake discs, and three-way adjustable Nitron dampers. The cabin keeps the focus on the driver, with the acclaimed aluminum open-gate manual gear shifter, Alcantara leather steering wheel, and carbon fiber sport seats, trimmed with either a combination of Alcantara and leather or optional full leather. Do you think that Lotus will be able to stay true to the British sports car heritage while being owned by the Chinese corporation? Does it really matter in the modern world who owns the majority stake in the company? Share your thoughts in the comments. Watch more episodes of Automotive Territory Daily News by clicking on the icons in front of you. Subscribe, like, and come back ASAP!